Hello and very warm welcome to our special edition, the question hour show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat Kane. Thanks Kriti and thanks to your viewers for watching this edition of Question Hour. Well Rajat, as you know, Question Hour is a very important tool in our parliamentary democracy as it provides the members an opportunity to elicit answers from the government as we know that ministers are collectively responsible to the legislature. And there are different types of questions, the start questions, the unstart questions and also the short notice questions. Start questions are those questions of which answers are sought orally on the floor of the house. While there are unstart category of questions as well where answers are deemed to be laid in the paper of the house at the end of the proceedings. And Rajat, this show of ours focuses on the important unstart questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha in the last session of Parliament or in the last session of the Upper House. And now, let's begin the show. And the first question in this edition is from member Dr. Devendra Paul Watts and this question pertains to the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. And Dr. Watts has asked the government whether it has framed any policy or proposals for R&D work to produce or manufacture medicines for treatment of newly emerging diseases in the country. Certainly a very important question given the coronavirus pandemic. Well, in a detailed response, the ministry said the government has initiated several programs and schemes to discover and develop new drug molecules. The Department of Pharmaceuticals has constituted an interdepartmental committee to coordinate work in the area of pharmaceuticals, research undertaken by organizations and institutes under central government for institutionalizing a robust mechanism to ensure economy, efficiency, effectiveness and transparency in the area of pharmaceutical research. Now, Department of Pharmaceuticals has set up seven national institutions of pharmaceutical education and research as institutes of national importance all over the country to impart masters and doctors education and conduct research in various specialization of pharmaceuticals. The government provides funding for different laboratories that are actively involved in drug design and development Indian Council of Medical Research, that's ICMR, and Defence Research and Development Organisation, that is DRDO, and the Council of Scientific Industrial Research, CSIR, laboratories have set up in the country to facilitate drug discovery and development programmes by the Government of India. Now, these research laboratories have only developed, have not only developed state-of-art facilities for drug discovery and development, but has also taken new drug molecules to clinical stage or launched the products. Similarly, Ministry of Ayush was set up by the government to promote and develop Ayurvedic herbal medicines. Now, further details are given as per the annexures. Now, NIPER Kolkata is conducting the research and development with an eye to develop lead molecules which may have cytotoxic activity against cancer cell line. Now, the molecules that have been synthesized so far are spirooxindilo circuminoids which showed psychotoxic effects on HEPG2, that is hepatic cancer cell line and Heller cervical cancer cell line. Now, testing of these molecules in animal fodder of cancer is also underway. In fact, Rajat, member Devendra Paul Watts joined us through a virtual platform and this is what he had to say on government's response to his question and he also made certain suggestions to the government. Take a listen. And joining us through virtual platform on the question hour show is Rajya Sabha MP, General V.P. Vats. Dr. Vats, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television and thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Sir, I remember interviewing you in the corridors of Parliament, but this is of course a different time that we're living in. So we have connected through virtual platform. But sir, our show focuses on the important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House during the last session of Parliament. And one of the pertinent questions that you asked during the last session was about R&D in policy framework as far as medicines are concerned for benefit of the people. Tell us about the relevance and importance of the issue given the coronavirus pandemic. In the <clears throat> session of Parliament, when it was being adjourned, I had brought out that it is, after all, 
a brother of influenza virus or common cold virus so we indians will certainly be having a cross immunity against it and now everybody agrees that 90% of us will not even know that we are infected 7 8% or let us say 10% will develop symptoms and out of them 1 or 2% will require oxygenation or ventilator that means natural resistance of the people matter most as far as finding new molecules finding the corona vaccine is concerned many claims have been put forth first like hydroxychloroquine was claimed to be a very effective medicine against corona even american president asked for it and we exported to brazil we exported to usa and many other countries because corona virus in addition to influenza virus is having two extra genomes genome like malaria and genome like hiv or some strains tuberculosis and it was seen that people who have been facing malaria or facing tuberculosis or even a bcg vaccine are having comparative or relative immunity against it but now who has stopped the trials of hydroxychloroquine also and stopped the trial of anti retroviral drugs also means anti viral drugs also because they found that there is not much of difference in the morbidity and mortality of the people to whom it has been administered but still the biggest emphasis is on vaccine and so many countries are developing vaccines including india even icmr has claimed that by 15th of august we should be able to come out with it though clinical trial is being expedited fast but it takes time because first phase of the trial second phase of the trial and final phase of the trial which will involve a big spectrum of volunteers to be tested or therefore one is vaccine because virus medicines are hardly effective though there are antiviral drugs anti retroviral drugs they are comparatively effective against herpes simplex virus zoster virus antiviral drugs are effective and molecules are also effective against hiv and subsequent aids but vaccine has to take precedence over these things because so far it has only been observed that responses are very different but common thing observed are that people above 65 years of age are more prone to covid 19 disease than people with comorbidities means if they are suffering from diabetes or they are heart patients or cancer patients are again more susceptible then children below 10 years of age again are at risk but in west this was the thing then people claimed that people with blood group a are more prone to it as compared to with blood group b or ab or o but all these are observations in united states more blacks have died than whites then immigrants are more prone to it but factual position is that highest death rate and highest deaths are in the far developed medical facilities country that is usa and death rate in england is also no way less 
so was in Italy and so was in France and so was in Spain. As compared to those countries, we have half or even one third of percentage of death rate. That is a big saving grace. Though it has come late in India, now we are digressing, we are coming to the pharmaceutical or pharma companies and developing a drug or vaccine against India was having 5% pharma industry for its local consumption and 95% was being imported earlier. But in 2020, we are having 85% medicines for up our local consumption and we are exporting to the world and we are third after USA and Germany we are third in the pharmacological index or competitive pharma company so world expects we are having a very big clinical spectrum also because very big population and in such a big population more numbers are likely to be affected so far we are thankful to Modi government and especially the Prime Minister that on war footing he ordered the lockdowns. And in that lockdown, prior to that, people had predicted that lakhs and lakhs will die in India. But because of lockdown, because of preventive measures like social distances, wearing the mask and hand washing, then to remain confined to their own houses. Despite the fact that uh, on Bandra railway station, when migrant labor started migrating, there was a huge crowd. So was on Delhi bus stand. But still, another very interesting feature is that people who are tuned to physical work and hard labor, they are less prone. Villagers are less prone than very congested city dwellers. We can also see the maximum deaths are in New York, London, Bombay, or Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Ahmedabad. So that way our crowds who disobeyed the corona discipline also proved to be resistant to it because they walking in the sun, they walking in heat, also developed resistance to corona. Because Dr. Gats, you're making a very workers. important point there. You're making a very important point there. But coming back to your moot question, which was about research, investing in R&D, in terms of medicine, where do you see India there? In R&D, you see, as far as pharma manufacture is concerned, as I mentioned to you, we are third in the world. But R&D requires a lot of patience and a lot of money. Minimum to develop a molecule, it takes 12 years, 10 to 12 years, because procedural it is, even if you have developed, it takes to get the approval, government approvals, other approvals like FDA approvals. Therefore, to put the money in research is an indefinite leap. I should say. Right, sir. That's a very important message that you're giving. And I hope that is going to reach to the government and to our audience at large. But Dr. Butts, you joined us through this virtual platform in this era of social distancing and shared your opinion and shared also what you feel about government's response to your question. Thank you so much for speaking to Rajya Sabha Television, sir. Thank you, Kriti. Thank you very much. So moving on, next question was asked by member B. Lingaya Yadav from Ministry of Home Affairs and he sought whether the government has constituted any task force or committee on crime against women and, ch and children, particularly girl children. And if so, what are the details in the last five years? And what are the recommendations received, accepted and implemented of Justice J.S. Swarma committee report? Well, responding to this query, the government says that no task force or committee has been specifically constituted for this purpose. However, the government says that taking into account the recommendations of Justice 
Verma Committee, government has already made various amendments in criminal laws, Indian Penal Court, and also Code of Criminal Procedure, Indian Evidence Act, and the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012, relating to sexual harassment, assault, or use of criminal force to women with intent to disrobe, worrisome, stalking, and also rape. The government further says that pursuant to the recommendation made in the Justice Verma Committee report, domestic workers were included within the ambit of sexual harassment of women at workplace, prevention, prohibition and redressal act of 2013. And moving on to the next question that has been asked by member Hussein Dalvai. And this question pertains to the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. And the member has asked the government whether it has given compensation to 282 Indians who died cleaning sewers and septic tanks in accordance with the rules of Supreme Court of India. Well, replying to query, the ministry said the Supreme Court in its judgment arising out of the case between Safai Karmachari versus Union of India and others directed states and UTs to identify all the case of sewerage related deaths that have occurred since 1993 and pay compensation of 10 lakh each to the family of the persons who have died while cleaning sewers and septic tanks. Now, above directions were communicated to all state and union territories for compliance. The issue is monitored by Ministry as well as National Commission of Safai Karmacharis. Now, as per the report furnished in the, to the N NCCK by states of 920 identified cases of death that have occurred since 1993, compensation of 10 lakh has been paid in 558 cases and partial compensation has been paid in 161 cases. Well, next question was asked by member S. Mutakurappan from Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and members sought to know if there is a fact that government is considering to develop national gas grid. Responding to this query, the government says Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board or PNGRB is the authority to grant authorization to the entities to lay, build, operate or expand gas pipeline as per the PNGRB Act of 2006. To increase the availability of natural gas across the country, the government has envisaged developing the national gas grid. At present, about 16,800 kilometers gas pipeline is operational and around 14,700 kilometers of national gas pipeline is under various stages of development. The government further says that an interactive discussion with various stakeholders from upstream, midstream and downstream segments have been held to access the requirement of infrastructure to connect the supply centers to demand areas for natural gas and now let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour show and this one was asked by member Paramal Nathwani and this question pertains to the Ministry of Labour and Employment and the member has inquired about the number of employment exchanges functioning in the country at present. For replying to the question the Ministry said that as per the information received from the states and union territories at present there are 997 employment exchanges functioning across the country. Now, as for the information received from the states and union territories, the number of job seekers, all of whom may not necessarily be employed, unemployed, beg your pardon, who got registered in employment exchange in country during 2015, 16, 17 were 69.4 lakhs, 59.6 and 39.5 lakhs respectively year-wise. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching this edition of Questionnaire. So, me and Kriti sign off. Take good care and stay safe.